Hey, what's up guys? This is the new TP-Link Deco XE200, their most powerful mesh Wi-Fi 6C system to date with a crazy fast speed rating of AXC 11,000 and a crazy fast 10 gigabit ethernet port covering up to 6,500 square feet. Now I will unbox this thing, do some speed tests in wired and wireless backhaul and get some range test numbers for you guys. Now this mesh does support Wi-Fi 6C which operates on the new six gigahertz span but it is backwards compatible with the previous wireless standards. And even if you don't have any Wi-Fi 6 devices, you can use the 6 GHz as a dedicated backhaul, which will improve the speeds on the secondary node when they're wirelessly connected. And it also includes enhanced security, so network protection, some basic parental controls, quality of service, and some reports. Opening this thing up, we have two units. They should be exactly the same. Both of these are actually routers. However, in this main network, only the one hooked up to your modem is acting as the router. So we have a gigabit port, another gigabit port, and we have our 10 gigabit port, which is crazy fast. And we have our power down here. It looks a lot like the Deco X90 I reviewed back in the day. Glossy top, pretty nice shape. And same thing here, and we're gonna have some power supplies and an ethernet cable. So we have our quick installation guide, pretty easy to set up using the Deco app. We have a CAT6 cable, and it is 100 to 240 volts. And we have the same exact so two of those, and that's pretty much it. It's been over a week since I've unboxed this thing, using it as my main mesh system, and so far so good. So no drop, something like that. In that time, I had a chance to do all my speed tests, range tests, have all those numbers here, which we will go over. And for my testing devices, I use my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, and a combination of my Pixel 7 Pro and Galaxy S22 Ultra, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now, both of these gave very similar results, so I just went with the Pixel numbers. So, I still have the Deco XC200 connected, just to demo a live local area test on Wi-Fi 6E. So this isn't even perfectly optimally placed, but it's close enough that I should be getting some really, really good numbers out of it. So again, my computer is acting as the server. So the phone is going to the router to my computer and it's going to be the maximum possible over wireless that this thing can handle with the Wi-Fi 6E device like this phone. So I got 1,910 megabits per second download. So the crazy thing is that's faster than ethernet on gigabit. So gigabit ethernet is slower than this on Wi-Fi and 1708 up, which is crazy, crazy fast. Jumping to internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast this router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds assuming the router itself is fast enough, which in my case this is. So my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. When I do a speed test via ethernet on my computer connected to this stuff, I easily get those speeds. However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. So there is a reduction in speed both for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. The 6E did a little bit better, but they're still definitely slower than the local speed test server. But this is very typical with most mesh Wi-Fi's that I test. Now to truly test the system, I need to do a local speed test server, which is what I demoed early on. And that's when I make my computer into the server. So I go from phone to router to computer. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from the secondary one to the primary one to the router. And looking at these speeds in the single router configuration, there is a huge increase in speeds both for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6C. Now wireless backhaul is when this guy is hooked up to the server and this guy is two rooms away or so, about 40 feet away or so, and it's wirelessly talking to this one. And again, I'm doing the speed test off the secondary one. And looking at these numbers, they are phenomenal. So Wi-Fi 6, there's pretty much no drop in speeds. And Wi-Fi 6C, there is a drop in speed, but it's still crazy, crazy fast. Now we get to wired backhaul, otherwise known as ethernet backhaul. And that's when you have an ethernet cable making its way from the secondary one to the primary one, typically creating the fastest and most stable connection. Looking at the speeds, we could see we got some really good speeds for Wi-Fi 6, essentially the same as a single router configuration. 
But the Wi-Fi 6E, even though it's faster than Wi-Fi 6, it's not the same as a single router configuration. The reason for this is you only have one fast port on each router. So if your 10 gig is being used for your modem, you only have the gigabit ports to make its way to the other guy. So even if you go from gigabit to the 10 gig, you're still gonna operate at the slowest of the two. So you're gonna operate at gigabit speeds. However, there is a caveat to this. So because these are auto sensing ports, if you have internet speeds of up to gigabit and you get this, you can actually hook up your modem to one of the gigabit ports and create a 10 gigabit LAN. So if you hooked up your modem to any one of these gigabit ports, then you could go from your 10 gig to let's just say a 10 gig switch and then to the other 10 gig of this. And so your devices, your home in theory can actually run at 10 gig again, because these are auto sensing ports. Now range test time range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around a lot of other wireless interference, all of this stuff can hurt your range. And here are my numbers. At 20 feet away, phenomenal speeds. At 50 feet away, still getting very good speeds, especially with Wi-Fi 6E. And this thing takes me all the way up to 300 feet, which is more than what I need. So it did fairly well for range. For setting up and configuring, use the Deco app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. Super easy to set up. It tells you what to connect where. You're up and running within five minutes or so. Very, very simple. Once you're up and running, you basically get four main tabs. The first tab is your home network. If you have a guest network, it'll show up there. And new to this is an IoT network, which I didn't use because I'm switching routers so often that all my stuff automatically connects because I use the same SSID and password. Number two, you get automation stuff. So if you have some TP-Link smart switches or smart plugs, which I do, but I didn't use because I don't want to go change all these settings again because I'm always changing routers but it's nice to have you can automate stuff you can say hey turn on for five minutes or one hour and turn off if I do this so nice to have the third tab is you can scan your network you could do parental controls so you can limit stuff if you want more advanced parental controls they do require a subscription to their home shield pro but the basic one is free it's included I should say when you get this router. And then you get QoS, you also get some reports. And on the fourth tab, this is where everything pretty much is. This is where you could change your Wi-Fi. You can uh, turn on 2.4 or turn off 2.4. You cannot separate 2.4 and five gigahertz as a separate SSID. I don't wanna do that anyways, but if you guys are thinking, hey, can I do that? No, you can't. But you can separate the six gigahertz as a separate SSID, assuming you don't use it as a dedicated backhaul. So if you're using wireless backhaul, I would recommend using it as a dedicated backhaul and it would be much faster. However, as a dedicated backhaul, your Wi-Fi 60 devices can't connect to that. They will connect to the five gigahertz band instead, which is still crazy, crazy fast. One of the best wireless backhaul speeds I've seen period. And then you get your IoT network, you get your guest network, you could, you know, check for updates. And then there's an advanced section. You could basically change your DHCP. You could turn on beam forming and all, a whole bunch of options. You can set the router up in access point mode. If you want to, you could turn off the LEDs. So a lot of options there. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, honestly, all of this depends on you. This is definitely the best TP-Link mesh Wi-Fi I've tested to date. So some of the advantages this thing has is it has a crazy fast 10 gig port and I love the fact that they're auto sensing because in my case, because my internet speeds are slightly under gigabit, I can actually use the gigabit port and use my 10 gig and because I do have a 10 gig switch, unmanaged switch, I can actually create a full 10 gig LAN throughout my home if I wanted to. So it's pretty awesome from that perspective. But other than that, crazy fast wireless backhaul speeds, some very good range, and just overall very pleased with the setup. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. As always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.